Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of the Grease Chain Podcast, an enthusiast hangout. So, as of this recording, it is Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. What does that mean? We have three days until Cedar Point opens for the 2024 season. I, however, was lucky enough to be um, able to ride the new coaster for this year, reimagining what everyone's talking about, Top Thrill 2. Um, this past Sunday, um, some friends and I, we went up to Cedar Point. Um, I personally did the uh, charity event. Um, that, that was fun. It was from noon to three. Um, you guys might know Matt. He helped out the channel. Uh, him and I went. We got four rides on that. We got two rides on Magnum. Overall, a great event. Um, I, I didn't really do a video because I was just there to ride. Uh, I did throw up a little five or six minute video for you guys. So if you watch that, you know, um, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not really going to dig you know, too deep into that. Um, but yeah, so the top four two was fun. Um, but I also wanted to bring someone on here kind of as our, well, actually not kind of like she is our first guest. Um, her, her name's Jenny. Uh, she's been a good friend of mine the last couple of years and I've, you know, grown to know her and she is very cool. She loves coasters and, um, she actually was up there Sunday as well. So I wanted to bring someone on why the feeling and the memory is fresh in our heads of uh, what Top Thrill 2 was like. So, Jenny, if you want to go and introduce yourself and just let us know how you kind of got into the coaster scene and, I don't know, maybe tell us your favorite coaster or theme park or music park. And, yeah, um, we'll go from there. We'll talk a little bit about Top Thrill 2 and we'll, we'll call it a night. Thanks, Josh. Um, hey, guys, I'm Jenny. Um, so my home park is Kings Island. I live in Columbus, so I'm not too far from there, but also not too far from Cedar Point. Um, I got into coasters pretty young. My parents took me and my brother to Ocean City, Maryland every year. And on our way there, we would stop in Hershey and I had a really fun time at Hershey Park. I actually rode Storm Runner the year it opened and that was one of the rides that kind of got me into coasters. Um, my favorite roller coaster, however, is Millennium Force at Cedar Point. That's just been a favorite for a long time. I, I love the height, the speed, the airtime, just everything about that ride. It's so special to me. Um, my favorite park, however, is actually Disneyland Park over in California. I'm a very big Disney fan and um, I just love going to Disneyland. It's so classic and just one of my favorite places. I do have a Walt Disney World annual pass, so I go there quite a bit too, but Disneyland just has a special place in my heart. Well, awesome, aren't you lucky? Well, thank you for introducing yourself there. So, um, Top Thrill 2, um, t- tell us what you think about it. Well, how many rides, well, I think you said you got one ride, I believe. Um, just tell like first initial thoughts as soon as you walked up we'll walk through those magnum gates like what, what came to your head so i was actually really excited because i had heard good things about it earlier in the day i mean i know you had already ridden it josh yeah. and you were telling me how amazing it was so uh, multiple friends had told me about it and i wasn't really sure what to expect for myself um i did like top throw dragster the original ride so i was thinking okay well this I mean, it's, they just redid it, so I don't know how it's going to compare, and I know um, with, I'm a very big fan of Intamin rides, so with it being Zamperla changing things up, I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about it, but um, I went to the pass holder preview slash Coaster Mania um, keychain event, because I was at Coaster Mania last year and I had the keychain. Um, so we got there pretty early, around 3.30ish. The line was pretty long, so I figured, oh, it's going to be a while till I actually get to ride. They gave me um, a boarding pass for the 5 to 6 time, so we could get in line at 5 o'clock and then um, hopefully ride before 6. Unfortunately, the line did take a while because the ride was down for about an hour, I want to say. Oh, so. Wow. Yeah. So by the time I got to ride, it had been about two hours and 20 minutes, I think, around that, which, okay. I mean, I was just glad I got to ride it. So it wasn't. Yeah. Really... So your, um, your, your first ride, like, okay, so let's, 
let's take our listeners through as soon as you walk up to the plaza like it just it has that refreshed you know brand new hey look at me i'm the newest gym in the park kind of look um when i saw that compared to what i remember was there just how dull and old and kind of boring uh you know it looked like this area they opened it up new concrete new paint new signs led lights it's definitely you know modern um tell me what what you thought on like the the plaza area like before you walk into the the ride and then we'll we'll talk about that next yeah um i actually thought that they did a good job refreshing it i personally really like the color scheme for the whole ride um including the signs and everything um i liked the big i don't know what you want to call it just the sign you walk under to go towards the ride um i thought that was pretty cool and i like that they had a lot of just different signs kind of just in that area i mean they had one if you're walking from magnum towards the new ride there was one that said top throw two and then if you're coming the other way from power tower like over there there was another sign too so i thought that was cool that they just went all out with everything yeah definitely and i'm glad they kept the bleachers <laughs> yes me Cause too I, yeah because i know everyone was like oh my goodness oh, did they take the bleachers out um but yeah and then kind of along like you know that plaza they completely redid the store so that store is pretty much all of top thrill 2 merch um power tire got a new sign new theme new paint um but yeah so let's talk about you know the loose oracle policy I, I haven't really dug into this much because i mean at the end of the day if that person's gonna want to ride they're gonna ride whether they leave their stuff sitting in a flower bed or put it on top of a walker or put it in a locker <laughs> so personally for us on sunday the walkers were free um will it be like that for the season no it's definitely not um me personally um i'm usually 90 percent of the time with somebody that can maybe hold herself that's not gonna ride or i mean i'll just pay the couple bucks for a couple hours and get a walker i mean it's really no big deal to me i mean is it a little frustrating yeah but again like i said at the end of the day if you're gonna ride you're gonna do what you can to ride um but that brings me to my next you know, a little topic I want to talk about here, metal detectors. So we thought with Still Vengeance um, after their loose article policy and they, they their locker situation there. Um, the uh, metal detectors, you literally cannot walk through that, or the metal detectors are right at the entrance. So right before you walk underneath the ride. Um, however, with the LSMs that they put on the ride, every time the train goes over it, it sets the metal detectors off. So. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know if uh, you saw that happen or I, don't know. I didn't notice that, but now that you said that, that's actually really funny. Yep, every time it went over. So you're thinking one, two, three. So forward, back, forward. So three times. And is that really going to affect capacity? No, because you're just <clears throat> excuse me, just getting in line. So, but I just thought that was kind of funny. So yeah, that get is in actually line. funny. Yeah, it is. Like, I, I, the the greeters were like, hang on, I'll wait, wait for the train to go by. <laughs> um, okay, so as you get in line, um, I kind of want to jump back in time a little bit to the original queue for Dragster. Those switchbacks, I felt like, went on for miles. There was just gobs of switchbacks in there. But this one, you have fast lane on the left and your standby queue on the right. Um, you get in, there's a couple little cattle pins, and then it's a straight line. A couple TVs, a couple fans, everything is covered. <clears throat> so that's nice. Um, but tell me what you think, because I, I, don't, I don't think I'm the only one that thinks this. But on a busy summer day, I don't think there's enough uh, switchbacks in there to hold a two to three, maybe four hour line. Like It's looking more like maybe 90 minutes maybe uh, you know two and a half hours but i just you know what are your thoughts on the the journey up to the station so i definitely agree with you on the not thinking there's enough switchbacks in there for a long line because i got when i got in um the other night 
we had we had had to wait because of it being down so the queue was still full at that point okay but when i actually entered the queue i think it took maybe an hour from entering the queue okay so, so all if the that gives you yeah if that gives you an idea of how long of a line that queue can hold it was about an hour from when okay. i entered and that's crazy like i get it they they wanted the queue as covered and as protective because there's like it it's not your your cheap netting it's like actual metal coverings and thick fence with a mesh like cover over it like nothing is getting into that line right and i do like that it's actually shaded as opposed to before when they had those blue tarp things that were covering it because those never really helped you feel like you were getting out of the sun they didn't do anything yeah and it was about i know you were there a little later in the evening but like when i was in there you know it was about high noon so like it was about 82 degrees it wasn't muggy or humid but like it was still a little hot in there and they didn't have the fans on towards the front of the line it was more the back side i just the airflow seems very non-existent in there um but yeah so after you you know metal detectors walk through the switchbacks you walk out of the covering you probably have i don't know maybe after the covering maybe uh 15 or no maybe like five to ten minute wait from there it kind of goes up and sinks around then you go up to the um you go up some steps so as soon as you enter the station um i've noticed the last couple of years cedar fair not only at like king's island but like cedar point like they only load one train at a time however um i learned to find out because i asked the greeter there or sorry the the separator that was you know signing you rows I'm like, did you guys change your policy? Like, what's your policy instead of just filling the station? So I was told that the guests in the station cannot be past the end of the, you know, like where you wait for the ride. Like, you got to be in that little square. So like the front row and the back row, you have enough for about five trains each, maybe. Maybe the front has a little bit more, but as long as you're in that little area, then um but yeah so let's kind of talk about capacity i know our both our crowd levels were different um i had like i don't know maybe a couple hundred people there you maybe had like a couple thousand maybe (laughs) based on the videos i've seen and the pictures um but yeah so capacity for me i i I see no issue i mean i know the old drafter had what like seven or eight trains um but they were very limited capacity. These hold 20 riders at a time, um, you know, forward, back, forward, and over, and then you're done. So as soon as the train on the track um, clears the top hat, the next one is out getting ready for launch, and then um, the switch track slides back. So you have one coming in the brake rule run, uh, one getting offloaded, and then one, you know, ready to go so what's your thought on capacity on like a a, like actually like this saturday i mean the weather's not looking too too good but like on a regular cedar point day what do you think the capacity is gonna be like so i was actually kind of concerned about capacity just because of there only being three trains available and i'm thinking i know you were just saying one's on the brake run one is getting unloaded and one is about to go launch but i feel like there could be a fourth one and that like there could be one getting loaded while the other one is about to launch. I don't know if that would be possible, but no, that that makes sense because as soon as you leave the station, the Swiss track is already on your side to go on to where you get launched. Right. And then as soon as you clear that Swiss track, it switches back to um, it switches to you know so you don't fall off the track. <laughs> so, <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, so capacity, I mean, it's a brand new concept, brand new rematch, right? So only time will tell, you know, someone that's actually going to sit there and take some video and, you know, say, hey, this is the estimated hourly capacity. Um, so yeah, a- after you, you know, get the station wait in line, 
the well, let's talk about the restraints. Like the, the restraints to me, like as you guys know me, I'm not the skinniest guy, but I'm also not the biggest. But I, those fit comfortable on me. I had no issues. Uh, they didn't have to come back and push my restraint down. I love the open air seating. There's no seat belts like the old Intamin trains. I just, I really like these trains. Yeah, I personally agree with you. Like, I think that they're, it's a nice design because I never liked those seat belts on Top Thrill Dragster. Oh, and then, yeah. I mean, the same yeah. ones on Millennium Force. Oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, they're, they're rough. I mean, I'm not skinny, but I'm also not like a bigger person, but I still yeah. struggle with the seat belts on yeah. Millennium Force. And <laughs> yeah, so I it was kind of refreshing not to have to worry about oh, am I gonna have to struggle with this seatbelt to get yeah. on this ride? Yeah. So after that, you know, they obviously the newer trains are all um, computerized, so you know if your restraints is not locked or not. So after that, you get the all clear, ready for launch. Okay. So as you're leaving the station, they put. I think I counted two, maybe three speakers out right before you turn to on the switch track to get on the main track. Um, they actually did a kind of a old throwback to the original "Baby, I'm Ready to Go" song. <laughs> um, you you kind of hear like engines revving up, and then you end up back out here. You hear "Ready to Go" like real quiet. It's almost like they they wanted to make you know the, the nostalgic people happy, but yeah, they did want. To pay for the rights for the full song maybe uh, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea um, so what's your thoughts on that little pre-intro there I do like that because I was always the person that would go to Dragster and be standing in the station waiting to get on and I'd be singing the song right. so I, I do appreciate that they brought it back but I kind of wish that it had been just left in the station and yeah. was just station music because I think that that really added to my ride experience yeah yep, I'm, I'm right there with you I, I, I like a good solid station music now I th- th- that is cool because it's kind of it's not the band it's quiet but it's loud enough for you to hear it so after that part you know, you are on the track, you're ready for launch. They brought the Christmas tree back. You got the countdown lights on the top of the top hat. Like, you are ready to go. So, I'm going to tell you guys my personal feelings. So, my first ride, I sat in row nine. So, second from back. I sat in row nine on the right side. Um, I'm just, I'm expecting, like, visually and like you know your body is expecting the launch that dragster gave gave you but in reality you get a 74 mile per hour launch forward which is still forceful but like it doesn't like you know oh my goodness like it doesn't wow you so you know you go forward 74 miles per hour you go up right until right about where the track starts to turn maybe a little bit less um and then Oh my god, like, quote me if, if, if I'm wrong, Jenny, but like, that backwards launch, oh my, that thing surprised me. Backwards at 101 miles per hour, and then you are, you know, looking straight down on the spike, like, let's talk about that before the, the big launch. So, your first experience going backwards at 101 miles per hour, like, what went through your head? So I wasn't really sure what to expect because, again, I was kind of thinking the same mindset as you, where I was, my mind was thinking, oh, I'm going to launch a lot faster going forward than we actually (laughs) did. So it it felt weird doing that. And then obviously, I don't know if you ever experienced a rollback on Dragster. I did not. Okay. I actually did get a rollback one time during Coaster Mania, and that was a lot of fun. So just being able to do that again and then actually get launched and go up the spike i thought that was amazing the backwards launch was actually my favorite part of the ride to be honest with you yep the the the, the backwards launch i i will say is my favorite part of the ride because what other ride can you go backwards over 100 miles per hour exactly i don't think there's a lot of course i haven't ridden a lot of coasters so (laughs) 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 but um yes so you know, I, I was, what to say, the back of the train for my first experience. I was row nine, second from back on the right side. So as you, me personally going up, 
looking straight down and you can look to your right and you're above power tower like come on that is insane and i don't know if you notice what's even more freaky which coasters don't freak me out riders don't freak me out there are there are no bumpers there are no bumpers on the end of that spike. I don't know if you saw that or not. Yeah, I think um, Tony Clark had mentioned it at, I want to say it was the Gawk party or something. Okay. I was at some event and someone asked a question about it and he said they were not planning to put a bumper on it, which personally, I think that that's kind of weird and I think that they still should put one on it just in yeah. case. But I guess they're saying that it should never go that high. But you never know. I mean, accidents happen. So, oh right. Personally, like, my I think mindset, that they should. Yeah, like my mindset was like, what if one of the launches get mistaken at 101 and launches right. at like 105 or 107, just a couple of miles per hour more to make it, you know? Because obviously, it launches 120, so it can definitely do 105 or seven, yeah. like another odd number to get you over that spike. Yeah, uh, but I mean, you know, I I guess that would be uh, one heck of a way to go. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, but yeah. So okay, after that backwards launch, you're getting ready to go down the spike. You know, as soon as you come down to the bottom, you have what every enthusiast loves is a near miss of a head chopper, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was actually not paying attention my first time and kind of forgot about the head chopper moment because I had my hands up. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Uh, um, but yeah, so and then as soon as you hit this uh, LSMs again, you launch, you know, just the speed like your your face is in the back of the seat. Like, it's just that 120 mile per hour launch. So what's your your thoughts on that? Like what, what's your, what was your experience? Like be, like before we talk about going over the top hat. So I just comparing it to the old dragster, it kind of, for some reason to me, it felt like it wasn't as fast for whatever yeah, it, reason. Yeah, it's definitely not as fast because the other one was a, uh, a uh, what's it called? Uh, a hydraulic launch. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like that's that kind of made a difference for me that it wasn't as fast and it did um, the the ride itself just felt different going up and then going back down and it's obviously because it's new trains so that made a big difference for me um, I did enjoy it though I I had a good time on it I forgot that there was a photo at the end of the ride <laughs> and I was thinking it was just gonna be the launch photo so my my photo at the end of the ride was horrible and I ended up not even getting it. I have fun pics, but I just oh, said I'm not even gonna not. bother. You should have. I oh, get no. every single one, it, you know, if I can just because of that moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of right there with you. I mean, there's definitely different from being pulled at 120 miles per hour than kind of getting a, a run and start from a spike and then having help getting over the top hat. Um, I thought, you know, you're still obviously going 120 miles per hour, so the speed is there, it's just the way you approach it uh, differently. So I kind of want to talk about that top hat. That top hat, oh my god, like, you get yeeted out of your seat. You get, yes. You get ejector airtime going over mm -hmm. the top hat, which is 420 feet up in the air. So you are getting airtime over 400 feet, and like it's crazy. And then the turn up, the turn back down, you whipped out of your seat, and just like that to me. Besides the backwards launch, is my favorite element is getting muted over the top hat. Um, what was your first reaction when you went over the top hat? So I first of all, I mean, it had been. What it's been a couple of years since we could have actually ridden yeah, dragster. Yeah, twenty twenty one. So it would have been summer twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a while since we've ridden it, and we're good. Just going up and going over the top hat. I mean, I just I missed that view from the top. I mean, looking at the lake, looking at the other rides, seeing Millennium, of course, because that's my favorite ride. <laughs> <laughs> but I I just really enjoy the view going over the top, and I looked at the person I was riding with, um, my friend Brendan, and we were just both just amazed by the way that we, like you said, got yeeted over the top. <laughs> yeah, like, you're literally, like, 
those of you listening, if you haven't wrote it yet or you have wrote it, you know what I'm talking about. But you are ejected out of your seat. So thank God for those uh, new love restraints. <laughs> they I definitely hold you in. If those weren't there, goodbye. Yeah, what a um, way to go. All right, what a way. <laughs> but yeah, so other than that, it's like the same experience with Dragster. Once you're up, down, over, you come, you know, you pass under the finish sign and then you have your photo, which will be on the right. Um, and you come to a, you don't come to a complete stop. It kind of like, it's a slow and then you kind of, you're continuously moving. At least I was, uh, depending on where the next train was because almost, well actually should be every time. There should be no train waiting to get offloaded because, you know, there's only three trains. Um, but yeah, you, you get in the station. It's a, it's the same station, but it's a separate loading station. So it's kind of nice. It's not other dragster where i believe they get offloaded like three or four trains at a time it was right on the curve right on the turn i believe um but yeah so you get off and uh they built a nice covered exit because you do exit under the spike so you kind of go down then you turn right and then there is um a separate lane for the ada passes or the exit passes whatever you want to call them um which is nice because you know that way the exit doesn't get crowded. Yes. Uh, which obviously it will. It's a brand new ride. It's your mm-hmm. point. People go there for vacation and yeah. Um, but yeah, so the right side of the station, you keep following that down and you go into the uh, fun text, the photo booth, which is the old one that Dragster used. It's literally, you know, they upgraded the TVs and they painted it to obviously the theme, but nothing of that really changed. Um, so yeah that is top thrill too um i have i personally have nothing bad to say about it um i got four rides in on it like i said i got row nine nine one nine six so, i rode i think i was row seven i was on the right side of row seven yep so my first ride was the row, row nine on the right and then front row on the was it the left? I don't know. I don't. I have to look. Maybe it was the right. I don't know. No, no. Yeah, left, left. It was the left. And then my second, my third ride was again row nine. I rode on the right. And then me and Matt were trying to get the last train for the front row, but there wasn't enough, so they made us move, which is fine. So we got row six, and I sat on the left. So, okay. Now, so, what was your favorite spot out of all of those that you? Oh my god! Yeah, I thought about that. Is it the front row or is it the back row? Um, personally, I think it's both. I, I now I, I haven't sat on the very very back. However, I'm sure row nine is not much different. Um, but I want to say that is going to be a front row ride, only because and I, I'm, I'm saying it's only because of. Uh, that that launch that just something different like dragster i i had a few like front row rides but i was i was younger i was i wasn't really into coasters as much as i am now and like i didn't really care where i sat but like on certain rides i have a certain seat or certain size so if i gotta wait even if i have to ride by myself i will <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, i'm sure you're the same on some rides yeah Definitely. But yeah, I, I definitely think it's a front row ride. You know, I, again, I know you only have to ride it once. That was because of the uh, pass holder and the um, keychain event. But I, if you can wait, I would definitely consider riding this one. I think I definitely will. Um, I mean, I might be going back on Sunday, so we'll see if I get a chance to ride it again. I don't know how long the wait's going to be. So that's also a concern being opening weekend and everything. And yeah. I think that they're going to experience a lot of downtime too. So just well, with it being a new. I was going to bring that up. Um, my downtime was literally because it sprinkled for a second. Oh, I do okay. know that they will not. Well, they said they were testing it in rain. So I don't know. But do you know why yours was down for, you said almost an hour. Yeah, it was. I want to say it was at least an hour of downtime for us because we had waited. So we got in line at five and then I think it went down 
around 5 30 so we had waited a half hour we were still outside of the actual queue at this point because oh, wow. that line was so long we were right underneath the new like gigantic sign thing that's not at the entrance but the one that you walk underneath you know what yeah, i'm talking about the uh, plaza yeah yeah we were right there and then i want to say it took at least an hour for us to finally move and then it was about another hour once we got inside the line but i think it must have been a mechanical issue because the weather was perfect it wasn't oh, yeah. rain sunday's weather was amazing now when i got there in the morning it was a little cloudy when the sun came out and it'll be a nice day um but yeah I, that's that's top thrill too um i still plan on being there this saturday for opening day and the weather right now showing at least on my end like 40 percent chance of rain and 60 so i i mean it's, it's not gonna be the best weather so maybe that'll help out the crowds maybe i'll get it to ride it but i'm not gonna go running there because i did get to ride it um i would actually like to ride the steel vengeance first <laughs> or maybe maverick like i haven't ridden maverick in a while it's definitely been a minute the one time i went to cedar point last year it freaking flooded <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> um, and then any other any other time i'm there it's chill out and like you know uh, nothing's open the, yeah nothing's <laughs> open and I, like i have the all park passport so we're definitely gonna get our use out of it you know my family we all have it so we're definitely gonna go up there more even though it's just a day trip get up in the morning head straight up there it's just the only thing that sucks about cedar point is is if you do not get there when they open then one you're either stuck in traffic for hours going down the causeway correct or two either you don't get a parking spot yeah you know, do I get up at 4 a.m. and get up there at 8 so I can get in at 9? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a it's, it's very, very tough decision for Cedar Point. At yeah. least King, Kings Island, like, it, Kings Island, like, tr- traffic and traffic in the park flows so much better. I agree with that. I think that, well, I think Kings Island has a better parking lot, oh, to be honest. 100%, 100%. And it's just, it's organized a lot better. I mean, I do the love flow, Cedar Point, the but flow is better for traffic yeah. and foot traffic inside the park. Yes, I definitely agree with that, and I think that with the weather maybe not being as good this weekend, maybe it will scare off some people. But right. with it being a new ride opening, that could still bring a lot of people there. So I'm thinking it's gonna be probably at least like a three-hour wait on oh, Saturday, Sunday. Minimum, minimum yeah. three, maybe. And I'm, I'm expecting a high turnout regardless of the weather. I think so too. Yeah. And I personally, like, I rode, I rode it once on Sunday and waited two hours and twenty minutes. I did really like the ride, but I just don't think I'm gonna want to wait gonna that one, long but, ever oh again. My goodness, I gotta be the first train of the first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, thank you. I don't well, need and, to get there and, that and, early. Yeah, and that's kind of how I am. I'm like, all right, I got my four rides. Well, I want to see are other people's reactions, and I want to see how the process works with the general public. Yeah, that that is like I want to see that more than I want to ride it again. I mean, of course, I want to ride it again, but I just want to see the flow. I want to see the madness that's going to be for the walkers. Is there? I definitely there. There are not enough walkers. I was thinking that too, and it's funny you said that because when I was waiting in line on Sunday. My friends were worried that there weren't going to be enough lockers by the time we got up to the actual entrance. So yeah, we got a locker too. super early and I, it was kind of annoying because I'm standing outside the line, not even in the queue and I don't have my phone or anything. Yep. So I'm just like disconnected from everything. Right. <laughs> Although I guess that's not a bad thing sometimes because then you no, can enjoy and time. That's where I'm, I'm kind of iffy about it. Like not everyone has smart watches. And yeah. if you do have a smart watch, not everyone has one that has LTE connectivity. Right. Mine I, is just the basic one. So yeah. I don't have. Like mine, I have LTE connectivity on mine. So if something were to happen, you know, thankfully I have that. Like I know not everyone has that, whatever you want to call it, that, that luxury. But um, it's, it's definitely going to, like, us enthusiasts that went there this past weekend and even yesterday and today, um, I think, uh, yeah, there's one, another one tomorrow, too. Um, you know, we don't really care much about that stuff, but, like, the general public, like, hey, like, a family of 
that has three or four kids, you know, waiting in line, you know, like, how are they going to know when they're off the ride if the parents have the phones, you know? Right. Well, and that's the thing, too. I mean, you have no way of finding out, like, if you have an emergency Literally, that happens. Way. Or... And, by my God, if an emergency did happen in the line... And it, the line's freaking four hours long. Like, wh- what are you gonna do? Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Just gonna get someone there ASAP. I don't know. But that can be a topic for another time after we see how the madness is yeah. going to go. <laughs> My uh, personal opinion, though, with the lockers is I like the way Steel Vengeance does it a lot better yes. because yes. it's halfway through. I mean, basically halfway through. So, it, well, I would say it, it's more than halfway through. Cause yeah, it's right before you enter the steps. So, I guess it just depends on like how long the line is. But yeah, it's. I think it makes more sense putting the lockers there. So at least you have like, let's say you bought the souvenir drink cup or something, and you want that in line with you. You can't bring that in line for dragster. I almost called it dragster. Top thrill too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's gonna take a while to get used to saying. Yeah, that. He, like pe- people over the weekend were calling it dragster. Like, oh my god, <laughs> dragster. that's so much fun. Yeah. Um, um, and then also, this is something else I noticed when I got off the ride. So, I tried to use my smart watch, like my Apple Watch, to get my fun pics your fun photo, picks and but it didn't work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you literally have to go back to your locker, go grab your phone or, like, pass, go back over well, there I and scan it. Well, I had my physical card with me. I just kept it in my pocket. Oh, okay. So, they say nothing in your pockets, but yeah. if it doesn't go off in the metal. If it's not metal, like, I had my pass and, and I had chapstick in my okay. pocket. Okay, but I didn't see it. Um, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so... Overall, I think Top Road 2 is going to be an amazing ride. It's definitely an A-plus for Cedar Point. Not only Cedar Point, but Sam Pearl has to take on and tackle literally the one of the biggest coasters in this world. The tallest, yes. fastest. It's, it's, it's good for them. So Parks you know, going to see that and maybe make like a, a, a mini drag. So maybe not 400 feet, but you know, maybe like 300 feet or do some kind of version of that um it, it's definitely good for both of them because cedar point got their crown jewel back and since zamperla knocked it out of the ballpark um but yeah this i do you have anything else to say jenny i mean i'm just excited to see how it does and um ride it again because one ride just wasn't enough because i feel oh, like yeah. it's one of those things where i wrote it and i was just so Excited! I didn't, didn't really focus on the details. Like I know you were saying, like certain details that you remembered from writing, but I didn't even notice some of that stuff because I was just so in the moment. I'm like, okay, I waited two hours and twenty minutes for this thing. Yep. I'm just so pumped. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to ride it again later in the season, and well, maybe this weekend. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, I, I would say definitely try to. You know, the, the weather you know, won't scare away those hardcore people, but the weather's going to scare away your family with, you know, three older kids and two younger kids that are whining all day. Right. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. O- only time will tell. As of this recording, we are three days out you know, from Cedar Point. I plan on getting this up as soon as I can. Um, but, yeah, um, I don't have anything else. Um, I-, I really, really appreciate you, Jenny, for taking some time out of your Wednesday evening to talk to me and talk to our listeners about Top Thrill 2. Um, I do this podcast again, it's just and it's an enthusiast hangout. We just get on here and talk about what we love doing and you know, you, you've been a good friend so I figured why not, you know, you had the experience the same day I did and you know, I, 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 got, I got nothing bad to say about it. Um, yeah. Well, thanks yeah. for having me. I really appreciate being on here, and I think it was fun being able to hear your experience versus mine because obviously we went at two different times. And yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, there's there is one more thing that I have to say about not having a bumper on it. Um, I noticed after I got home, and I think it was like Monday or Tuesday. Um, I was watching someone's video on YouTube, and I noticed when they were shooting video of the spike. Um, so it goes like red or is it white then red it's 
red, white, red, white. So usually it goes up to the third, like, so the second from the top of the white part. But there were some videos that were, you know, like the rides warmed up, the wheels are warmed up. It was going higher than what it was when I was there. So like, it's like, okay, what's going to happen on a a (laughs) hundred degree summer day? Are you going to like be creeping through the top there? Yeah. uh, Again, I think that the spike definitely needed a bumper but i guess we'll just hope for the best <laughs> right I don't know. definitely don't want to find out because then they would like tear it down <laughs> oh yeah well yeah. i mean that would be awful oh right. uh, <laughs> let's just extend it by another 100 feet <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but yeah well thanks again jenny i really appreciate it and until next time you're more than welcome to come back and hang out and this enthusiast hangout and uh, here on the grease train podcast Have a good night, everybody.